Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for this day. By the grace of God, we want to get it into God's word. Thank you, Bishop Jimmy and Pastor Alice for allowing us to do this. Who would have thought that this would be the place we find us? The prophet of God, Pastor Beatrice, spoke this word many, many days ago. And now we're seeing it coming to pass. Uh, I'm excited this morning. I don't know whether I'm... Anyway, I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I am born again this morning. I'm married to one wife for the last 21 years. On the 14th of this month, we celebrated our anniversary. My wife is here, just in case you didn't know. Her name is Esther. Esther the Queen. And this is David the King. And we love God. We came to this church when we were young people when we didn't know how to do things. And now we know how to do things. We have sat under the able leadership of uh, Bishop and Pastor Alice. By the way, Bishop Jimmy is the one who officiated our wedding, just in case, for your records. And uh, though we have failed many times, Bishop, we, we are trying. We, we don't want to embarrass you. We want to do this thing. <laughs> Because the word that you spoke then, that the Lord is going to open ways and doors for us to prosper us, we still hold on to it. Amen. Uh, we have a couple of minutes to share God's word. And um, I am excited this morning because th there's a saying in our community, and maybe it's in your community. I have I've realized that all the communities are the same. It's only that uh, the languages are different. And if it is true in your community, you want to say, Yes, and this is a saying in our community. This is what we say. To go is to see. So in our community, if that's the way you say in your community, let me see you nod. To go is to see? Oh, yes. To go is to see? I, I'm waiting for people to know. To, to go is to see? Go the ne kuona? That's what we say. Go the ne kuona. Do you say that in your... To go is to see? Ah, we are coming from the same community. It's only the languages uh, that are different. And, and so, in my sharing this um, morning, which is going to be very short, because to go is to see, uh, the Lord is good. And, and um, we will share that as we go on. I want to go into the scriptures, and I want to look at the scriptures in the book of Hosea, chapter number one. Hosea, chapter number one, we will see the servant of God, uh, Hosea called to be a prophet, uh, and this is the time the kingdom is divided. We have the north and the south, uh, and this is what scripture says. Uh, there are just 11 verses in that uh, whole chapter, so we're going to read through. I am one person who is persuaded that when you read God's word, it speaks to you. So even if I don't preach to you, that word should speak into your life. Uh, because I also read it, and now I'll be telling you what it said to me. So as you read it, it will be speaking to you, and so you can pick what the Lord is saying. It says, the word of the Lord that came to Hosea, son of Barry, during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. And those were the kings in, in the time that uh, Hosea the prophet prophesied. Uh, kings of Judah, and during the reign of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, king of Israel. Now, that was a king in the northern. The others were in the south. It says in verse number two, when the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her, for like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. Verse number three says, so he married Goma, yes, married Goma, daughter of the blame, and she conceived and bore him a son. That son, the name we shall be given, says, the, the Lord said to Hosea, call him Jezreel, because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. Verse number five says, in that day, I will break Israel's uh, bow in the valley of Jezreel. 
Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. And the Lord said to Hosea, call her Loruhama, which means not loved. For I will no longer show love to Israel that I should at all forgive them. Says verse number seven, yet I will show love to Judah and I will save them. Not by the bow, sword, or battle, or by horses and horsemen, but I, the Lord, their God, will save them. Verse number eight says, after she had weaned Loruhama, Goma had another son. Then the Lord said, call him Loami, which means not my people. For you are not my people, and I'm not your God. Verse number 10 says, yet the Israelites will be like the sand on the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. In the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, they will be called children of the living God. The people of Judah and the people of Israel will come together. They will appoint one leader and will come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. Amen. I have, uh, because it is good to have a title for your message, if it serves to remind you, I have entitled this message, The Day of Jezreel. Now, if we just get into that story or that account, by the way, this account of Hosea is not fiction. It is not, um, it is not a nice story that is being told so that we, we bring out a message. It is actually history. It is recorded. It is at an, an event that happened in history. There was a man called Hosea called by God to be a prophet. And Hosea prophesied to the kingdom of Israel. And his prophecy was encapsulated in his life. So to speak, his life was supposed to be the message to the people of Israel. And I don't know how you would want it or how you would love it. I know all of us want the Lord to use us. Amen? How many want to be used of the Lord? Please get ready. Hezekiah, uh, Hosea is called by God. And God says, I'm going to prophesy. And God says, I'm going to make you a prophet over my people. And the prophecy is this. You're going to marry that prostitute. And I don't know how many young people in the house who have lived, waited for the Lord. And you're saying, I am looking out for this day. And I can see some who are looking at me. And then, lo and behold, God says, I have a wife for you. And she's not in church. She's in the streets of Nairobi in a place called And I'm sending you there. Go and identify. And, and her name is, <laughs> her name is Goma. Again, if we go back to her languages, I don't like that name. But this is the woman that God says to Hosea, go marry that woman. And Hosea, because he was a servant of God and he had found favor in the Lord, he went and in obedience married Goma. You look at the prophets, and something comes out as you look at uh, every prophet that Scripture uh, records prophesied um, at one time or another. One of the things that happen is that the prophets bring out something that is happening within the society. Either there is sin that needs to be addressed, and God brings it out through the prophet. says, this is the thing that is happening. And, and this is not different from uh, what Hosea does. And then the prophet says, if we do not go back to God, then this is going to happen. Then he predicts or he says or he tells the people what is about to happen. And then finally when that happens, he does not leave them there. He says, after this is done, then God is going to come and bring you back to himself because God will always bring us back to himself. It really does not matter what you have gone through and you're thinking, I have fallen so far. 
When you're going through a situation, and some of the, situ the situations that we're going to go through, some like uh, just we had the other day, I don't know whether it was Pastor Brian who was preaching, saying, or it was Bishop, saying, you know, we, we find ourselves in things and we are saying like, now this one, I know God is not in this because I brought myself into this. But others are God-ordained situations. God allows you to go through a situation because he wants to bring you back. I pray that we would not lose sight of the fact that God wants to restore us to himself. And so in this story of Hosea, the idea is not to punish the people. The idea is to bring back God's people to himself. Hello? We are going through a situation right now, and we might not like it. And some of us have gone through this, and... It's been devastating. Jobs have been lost. Relationships are broken. What you thought meant anything to you is gone. I'm here to submit to us. God is not punishing us. God is restoring us to himself. Oh, you don't believe that. Going through what we are going through is because God wants to restore us and have a relationship with us even through this situation. And this is what he does in the life of Hosea. And so Hosea marries this wife, and they, they get a son. Their firstborn son is called Jezreel. Now, Jezreel, like we have read, um, means, I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and I'll cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. Now, because Israel, being the, in the northern kingdom, did what was not right in the eyes of the Lord, and so God needed to come and avenge. And he does not do that without warning the people. He tells them, for the sake of your remembrance, there is a son in your midst, and the prophet has begot a son. His name is Jezreel. Do not lose sight of this. Until it happens, Jezreel is around. So Jezreel serves to remind us that God is at work. They continue building their family and they get a second born. And the second born, we are told the name of the second born daughter is called Loruhama. And the meaning of Loruhama, just like we read, says or means I will no more have mercy upon Israel. So the first one he says, I will avenge. The second one, I have no mercy upon you, Israel. Remember we are saying, Hosea has been called to the nation of Israel in the north. And then they continue and they get a third one, and the third one was named Loami. And Loami means, you are not my people. Now, this was enough message to the nation of Israel, to the people of Israel, that God was about to do something. God was not just exciting, um, you know, the people around or making a mess out of Hosea's life. He was speaking to the people. He was bringing out uh, a good uh, thing in the lives of the people then because he wanted the people to get back to him. The last verse that we read, verse number 11, if you would uh, give us that, says this, verse number 11 of uh, Hosea chapter number 1, verse number 11 says, the people of Judah and the people of Israel will come together. They will appoint one leader and I will come up out of the land and will come up out of the land for great will be the day of Jezreel. Now, that day of Jezreel for me becomes the day of restoration. I know we have come into this year and, you know, coming into this year, we were coming with restoration and demonstration. Amen? And that hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. And you could be wondering, where is restoration in all this? Where is, where is demonstration? God wouldn't have demonstrated his authority, his supremacy, his way of doing things in a better way than what we are seeing. Allow me to digress a bit. Why I'm saying to go is to see is because God has given me an opportunity to see. Yesterday, I think I have finished my message. 
So in case you never got a point, um, it's, it's too bad. So yesterday, I go to a place we were going to dedicate a house. Now, this house belongs to our member, a friend of mine, a young, nice, young man. And he tells me a story that left me seeing with the teeth. Do you have that saying in your... <laughs> yes. So I had an opportunity to see with the teeth yesterday. And he tells me, the beginning of this year, he had no plans of building. He didn't even have a plot. He had... And I, by the way, I asked for permission. I had actually asked, if I share this story to God's people, is it okay with you? He said, please. I will even look for an opportunity to share the testimony. So I'm just, I am, I'm John the Baptist. Jesus is coming. <laughs> so he tells me, in January, didn't have a plot, didn't have money, didn't have, it was just in the thinking that, like every one of us here, men, were saying, one day I'm building a house for my family. So just like he's an ordinary man, like you and me, but January, nothing, February, nothing, March, nothing, April, nothing, May, nothing. I know you're wondering. I say, oh, yes, we dedicated the house yesterday. Me, hakuna plot, hakuna pesa, hakuna. June 10th, my brother wakes up in the morning and he tells me this. He had to go and, your account in Akwanga, you know, when the account does not have money for a long time, not because you wanted, but because, yeah, your yeah, dormant account, it had to be resuscitated on the 10th of June. In the morning, he woke up, nothing. In the evening, he was a millionaire. I said, <laughs> introduce me to this God. <laughs> Can you imagine the pastor is the one who is going to dedicate and say, I want to know this God. <laughs> and so, the long and short is, within two months, he has built the house, and we dedicated it yesterday, and <laughs> the family is moving in today. Along the way, he tells me, I am what I am today because of DCIKZ. And I'm saying, yes, yes, but yeah, because of God. You know the way you want to be humble and say, yeah, but because of God. But it is true, it's because of God. And, and that just tells us that God is in this place. See, I was like this, I was like this, but now see what God has done. And he says, in the course of the last two months, it's like, you know, the caretaker has been on his case. Kama huwezi kulipa nyumba. See, you talk and, and he's saying, he's saying, hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep, keep, keep speaking that. And finally, he told the caretaker, I am moving out. Your deposit and your nakaria this time, so I'm not going to be here. You making noise for me every other day. I'm going to my house. For me, that was it. For me, that was it. I said, God, is this what is called restoration and demonstration? And, and you know, at some point he shared with me and he told me, in the year of open, open heavens, <laughs> open heavens here, do you know that year? Which year was it? Okay, just in case you have forgotten, it was 2019, year of open heavens. He tells me he kept on looking to the heavens like this and there was no open heaven, he kept on looking until the year came to, the, to, to an end. But right now he says, I know the heavens were opened. God did what he had to do. It is me who wasn't seeing. Now, the day of Jezreel is the day of restoration. That that name that they have given you, that God is not with you, that you don't belong, that you are not part of this family. God is coming to change all that and say, you are my people. I have a plan for you. I have something in store for you. I have not forgotten you. So whatever it is that you are going through, I pray that you don't lose sight of what God is doing at this time because this is restoration and demonstration. God speaks to the children of Israel and lo and behold, what God had said concerning the nation of Israel, the kingdom in the north, happened. And finally God establishes the southern kingdom. Today, the nation of Israel, the way we know it, has come out of this 
southern kingdom. Why? God spoke. He warned the people. He did what he had to do. But he was not going to lose his people. Today, God is not about to lose you. God is not going to lose you. And everything that is happening, he will allow you to know it. He will bring signs your way. He will speak into your life. He will speak into your situation. He is telling you the way to do things. The way to live in this life. Because he wants you reconciled back to him. Are you here and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you here and you have gone through this year? You have gone through the past few days and you are saying, God has forsaken me? If it is possible with you to stand on your feet, I want to make a prayer for us and we'll be done. Because God has not forgotten you. You could be going through a sickness and you don't know where this is going to take you. And people have told you now, this is what they call terminal. I'm here to tell you that God has not forsaken you. God has not forgotten you. God is in the business of restoring you back to himself. So I want to ask you to rise on your feet if you're there. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, be the first to do that. And if you're there, you have a situation that you want to tell the Lord, this situation, I want to see you restoring me through this. I ask in the name of the Lord that you will rise up and want to make this prayer together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever situation is in the lives of your people that has caused them not to see you being at work and working for them to restore them to yourself. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we think, ask, or imagine, you're going to do a new thing in their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, it could be a situation of luck that has prevailed. And Lord of glory, your people standing in this place, our Father. They have been mocked and ashamed, our Father. They have asked, where is your God? I pray that in the name of Jesus, that the day of Jezreel becomes today in the life of my brother and my sister standing here in the name of the Lord. It could be sickness and disease that has prevailed in their lives. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, because by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. We want to stand on this side of heaven and declare, this is the day of Jezreel. We are being reunited back to God. We are being reconciled back to God. And so sickness and disease is not our portion. In the name of Jesus, oh God of glory. It could be situations in relationships, our Father, that are not working. Parents and their daughters and sons. It could even be a situation of a young man and a young lady. It is not working out, our Father. We want to come to you. Ask that God of glory, you that did it with the children of Israel in the days of Hosea, our Father, that you will do it today for every one of us in the name of Jesus. So we speak healing in every relationship in the name of Jesus every relationship that needs to stand because God has an agenda for his people. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that that relationship is being healed right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. And Father, we bless you. Concerning our nation, we will ask that in the name of Jesus, that which you want to do, our Father, during this time, we wouldn't have fought for a moment that we would get here, but you have brought us this far. We are going through a time that is tough and hard, but we ask that in the name of Jesus, that through this time, our Father, you will do what you have purpose to do, and we will not miss it in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we honor you. We pray that those of us who are said that they are not the people of God, that this morning in the name of Jesus, we are reunited with God and they shall say of us that indeed these are the people of God. When the enemy hit us so hard, we pray that on this day, our Father, that you are avenging for us in the name of Jesus. Those that have lifted their hands, they have lifted their voice against us, our Lord, and we have cried to you. This day in the name of Jesus becomes the day that you're going to avenge for us. We pray that every enemy of our lives, every enemy that is set from Hades, our Father, you will fight for us in the name of Jesus. You have spoken and we have heard. We submit to your authority. We submit to your will, our Father. We thank you and we bless you. 
the situations that are right in our homes, like it was in the situation of Hosea, right in his house, his children, our father, becoming other things that were not what you intended. I pray that that situation be, will be changed right now in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you, our Father. We honor you this morning. We know that you have done it for us, our Father. And even that which God of glory, we are not able to speak out, our Lord. You're going to deal with it in the name of Jesus. We thank you, our Father, and we honor you this morning. We pray that our Father and our Lord will not lose sight of what you're doing. That this year where you've spoken, you released a word to us that you're going to restore and you're going to cause this restoration to be demonstrated. Lord, we pray that our Father, we will plug into it with all that we are, without a doubt, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we honor you this morning because we pray this trusting and believing in Jesus' name.